hello and welcome to this special update to the channel this video will be going live on christmas eve and i hope i find all your family safe and well it's been a 2020 that we'll never forget and i guess from the announcement that boris johnson has just made it's going to be a christmas it's going to be very different but i wish you all a safe and a happy christmas so in this vlog what i've decided to do is put together a few of my favorite vlogs from 2020 2020 is a year that we'll all want to forget for many reasons but from a fishing point of view along the way there's been a few things that i've put a smile on my face and i have enjoyed there will be another video going live as normal tomorrow on friday on christmas day at 6 pm so i look forward to seeing all the guys who regularly turn up to the premiere in the comment section and then reading all your comments on the vlog and i hope you enjoy this little adventure that we go on tomorrow it's christmas eve and i've put this video together for those guys who just want to grab a brew a mince pie sit back and relax and watch a bit of fishing i hope you enjoy looking back over some of my favorite vlogs of 2020 i look forward to seeing you at six o'clock tomorrow and i hope you all have a safe and happy christmas i'll just share a little session that i did a few days ago when i come up here with my little lad and um, we managed to catch his first car so i'll just play that little bit of the vlog now you got him? Yeah. <laughs> is it a big one yeah he's a big one <laughs> well done well done how do you feel great is that good yeah no bring the net up no. he's in the net how big's that Giant. take the little lad fishing they said only gone and bagged himself a nice scaly mirror on the floating crust. Enjoy that? Yep, now that's holding it. Yeah. And look at that for Joshua's first fish. Are you made up? Yeah. What a battle. Made up, made up. Yeah. Finished. It, it was a battle against the fish, wasn't it? A big battle, wasn't it? Yeah, it was a battle against the ducks because. The ducks they... were in the bird, weren't they? Yeah. Fifteenth of March, 2020, and the end of the river season campaign. On the windswept banks of the River Ribble, fishing with two mates, we enjoyed plenty of days on the bank that day, and planned future adventures for the coming months. Along with them, plans were made for me and my daughter to also get bankside. She loves making the vlogs for the channel, and we had plenty of plans in place. Little did we know though what was about to come, as the country was put into lockdown. Over the course of lockdown I made a point of trying new things, live streams on Facebook and tying new rigs for the season to come. A light at the end of the tunnel did arrive when the Angling Trust began making plans to get fishing back on the cards. First Saturday after lockdown is where we begin this week's adventure. So straight away it became apparent that fishing is going to be very different in the next couple of months. Normally beside me would be my uncle. The seat remained vacant and just opening the locks on a gate became a very different experience. So a very small intimate water. Bit of open water but there's a corner. It's got quite a few snags in. And this is where I'm planning on putting a bait. Realistically, I've probably spent more time driving around tonight than I will have actually been fishing. But let's get a rod in the water. So tackle for the session, my Corum opportunist rod. And not knowing the stock of the lake, I just went with a simple method feeder approach. One small mouthful of bait, 
that hopefully would slip up any fish that lived in the pool. So for such a small venue, there are plenty of inviting nooks and crannies that just look perfect for dropping in a method feeder. I began by just dropping a handful of pellets in a few likely looking spots just to see if the bait disappeared during my short session. And then I set back, got the rod in position, set the alarm and hoped that something would come to dine. And this is what I love most about fishing, the peace, quiet, tranquility, the wind's dropped, everything's coming home to roost and yeah just two hours spent with my own thoughts and maybe not thinking about everything else that's going on. But in to that first fish and after eight weeks it doesn't half feel good. And there we go what a way to enter back out of lockdown a little bit of opportunistic fishing one bite one carp and one happy angler a super short vlog this week i did what i said i was going to do look around try and find a venue that was empty i found it and just over 17 pound of wild beautiful carp let's get it straight back So very fortunate to get that fish on the first session. This time of night is when I would have been hanging on for had I not caught it. That wind has just dropped and you can see the movement now and you know a few bubbles coming up. The rod's back in. After that disturbance I very much doubt we'll get another one. We'll give it half an hour and see how we do. So having spent two hours on the venue, one thing that really struck me was how still it was. You didn't even see the flotsam move or any side of that fish in the area. It's certainly my type of venue. Secluded, wild, and I can feel like the start of a new adventure. So this story is definitely to be continued. Tight lines, and I'll catch us all next week. Well, first cast 
literally sorting stuff out and the rods hooped over I've said before when you start like this it only gets worse normally <laughs> I would think it's going to be a chub because it has come over the river quite quickly we get a look at him and it is a chub and that's an excellent start always good to get a fish on your first cast but like I always say sometimes it can be a curse hello and welcome to this week's angling blog today you join me on the banks of the river seven and what a start the rod absolutely screamed off put a bit of hemp in to start with first cast over the top this four pound eight ounce chub and if catching four pound chub was a hobby i'd be very good at it one night this year they've had a lot of four pound chub sometimes this can be the kiss of death if you get a fish first cast it doesn't always bode well for the rest of the session but well worth the effort coming down to the seven today for the afternoon straight down into the snags let's see if we can see him there he goes what a start looking at the swim we've got shallow water downstream and moves into slightly deeper water and that is the type of area that i will target when the river is really clear like today and low i imagine them barbel are maybe in them snags downstream in them rapids certainly you should be able to draw some along that cover it's dark water you know shaded for the time being i've got one rod in line with that reflection and i've put hemp over the top of that quite heavily and the far bank we're just casting as close as we can to the tree probably about five or ten yards off it trying to draw any fish out there is a snag round about here so you've got to be careful normally i would be trying to aim for that slack water above the tree and let it bounce down but there is a bad snag there and you you know i've lost gear before on it and not about to make the same mistake so that's the swim we've had that chub and hopefully hopefully we can get a barbel it's a beautiful day to be on the bank we really are in the last days of summer into autumn and soon it'll be pike chub dace and roach so we're just into the first proper bite of the day and it's almost certainly a barbel wanna pass it round the rod just plodding from weed bed to weed bed at the moment and it'll probably make a fool out of me in a minute and probably be a chub but I very much doubt it <laughs> very much doubt it So with that barbel resting in the edge, going to give it plenty of time, but that doesn't mean that I can't bait up the swim, you know, while I'm waiting. Prime that swim, keep any fish that might be there in the swim. Well, if ever the trip was worthwhile, it was today. That four pound chub, and with the sun still up, the rod has absolutely screamed off with this nine pound, two ounce barbel. A proper scrap. Went for that snag most definitely. Arm was aching all the way through the fight. 
but what a beautiful fish that is and just shows when you sat at home thinking should you come through the answer should always be yes well worth the hour and a bit drive and you've got to think the best is still to come thank you very much girl you've made me a very very happy angler let's get it straight back as i always say when you've got a barbel on the bank concentrate on the one that's in the net you know give them all your attention get the rods in he's been down there for a while now well rested time to go back so the rods that i'm going with today are the corum excalibur rods 1.75 pound test curve I get lots of questions on these rods and like i always say on the channel i let the fishing you know speak for itself and you guys each week get to see them in action you see what they can do what they can cast what they can catch etc i think mr chubb has just found the bait so teaming them up with the Corvum shadow reels with 12 pound line you can see there got the rods nice and high keeping that line off the water and we'll take a look now at the business end so i've just been trying to record a piece of camera on the rigs and the far bank rod has just gone i don't think it's a barbel almost certainly gonna be mr chubb and there we go another nice one as well so to the business end i've got a corum bolton run kit behind which i've got a quick change swivel i've got a sleeve to aid separation on the cast in the feeder i've got the hinders barbel bond ground bait the hinders ellipse small pellets a bit of hemp and i've just plugged that both sides with the ground bait so how does the bottom run kit work well, what it means is you've got like a nodule there on the clip and what it means is you can have the choice to have it free running like that or you can push it over that nodule and it becomes the bolt rig effect so what i'll do is i'll have it like that when i cast in so i'm getting the bolt effect but what makes it safe you know if you cracked off or snapped above here then that becomes free and the barbel isn't you know tethered to the feeder that's down to a 10 pound fluorocarbon hook link a size 12 corbin grappler hook and a 10 mil or an 8 mil pellet and you'll notice i've got it really tight to the hook now a lot of people want to avoid the chub so they'll have a longer hair so it sticks out so the chub can't get hooked but as you've seen for me i'm not fussy i want to catch chub i want to catch barbel and if there's big roach about i want to catch them as well so as you can see there that is as tight to the shank as i can get it so that's the setup as you've just seen i've been rudely interrupted so what i'll do is we'll take a look at that chub now so second chub of the session almost um put it on the scales and it went four pound eight ounces but it's the same chub as before most definitely it's got the markings above it's thin and I don't know if you can see it on camera, but it's got like a ridge on its back. Round about here, it's got like a lump on its back. So it most definitely is the same chub. One greedy chub. So good to see an old friend again. But I hadn't hoped on seeing him till winter when he was over five. Let's get this greedy, greedy chub straight back. As with most weeks there's plenty of questions that come in on the channel and i try and answer every single one of them and if i can't answer them what i try and do is include it in a future vlog if it's easier just to show this week was contacted and asked what exactly do i carry on the bank when i go for barbel the main thing that i do is take the minimum amount of tackle that you can carry you don't want to be lugging loads of gear i very rarely bring a chair with me preferring just to sit on the bank i might bring a brolly but i always look at the weather but they are the three main things that i carry a rucksack a bucket which normally has the hemp in and the ground bait and me hold all that is the transition three rod quiver for anyone who's interested 
it carries three rods, my uh, bank stick, and there's a compartment in the side of it which I normally put a few bits and pieces in, a drink, my brolly, and my bank sticks. What I've done there is I've literally just opened up all the compartments to make this bit easier. So in the main compartment, I carry my EVA riddle. In there, I've always got my ground bait. Obviously, this is made up because we're fishing. And in the bucket, I've got my pellets. That's the ground bait made up. Some baits that I would use probably if there was colour in the river or when I'm going into evening. But they store nicely in that. And this one. And these are fantastic if you want to carry electrical stuff because they are waterproof. In the top I've got my batteries for my head torch. And in there I've got all my things for vlogging. Got my head torch, a power bank, uh, a light. I've got a selfie light behind it just for filming keeping everything electrical dry in this i did used to carry a two pint tub with all my hook baits in if i'm gonna fish like today with a banded pellet but you're carrying hundreds of pellets for no reason you're never going to get through a pint of hook bait so i'll leave the other pint at home and just carry that one and at the end of the day I've got enough hook baits there to probably last me a season. No need to carry the other pint for nothing. We've seen this before on the vlog. It's my tackle box. And in there, got all my bits and pieces that I need for my barbel. Looking in the side compartment, I've got my ledgers split into two. So in that one, I've got my four and five ounce leads. And they say they just fit in the, the corner. The pockets are made to pint regulation. So each one of these boxes is a pint in size. So the, the actual hold all is made so they fit in. And they're my, I think they're actually my three ounce feeders them. But separated nicely. And then we come to this corner. Got a packet of the ellipse hard dumbbells. The one bit of item that you never should forget a waistling and your scales always important hopefully that answers the question as you can see everything away all nice and compact and nothing in there that you don't need you've got a bit of extra storage if you need it if you want to carry like me tripod in there but hopefully that answers the question that's coming and i'll look at what the gear that i carry to the bank the trip through was well worthwhile it's turned into a bit of a red letter session just about to do a bit to camera to say that i got in about quarter past two and a bait in the water probably about i would say say three o'clock it's just coming up now to quarter past six and between getting all the questions done that people have asked in the week and doing the rigs and stuff like that and sorting the fish out it's proving <laughs> a bit of a red letter session it's another chub let's hope he's not the same one in fact i know he's not he's certainly a lot smaller and it's quarter past six now and the rod's literally been in the water five minutes and it's gone again slightly smaller probably three pound maybe but let's get it straight back so like a lot of people in the country at the moment i'm working from home but it's still work isn't it so i'm just going to enjoy the last embers of this beautiful autumn end of summer day it's a beautiful time to be on the bank and i'm going to make the most of it
So like I was saying, it's been an absolutely manic session. That rod been in probably 10 minutes if that. And after two chub, we're almost certainly into a barbel. It's most certainly a snag or a weed bed mid river because every one of them including the chub have had me in it I don't know how many more barbell sessions we've got left of the season hopefully we've got time for one or two more as you've probably seen on the channel been a lot of barbell fishing and I've thoroughly enjoyed targeting these fish they really are great fun and this isn't the biggest barbel in the world but you can just see the scrap that they give you and if you've never fished for them just go and give it a go so if you've never given barbel fishing a go definitely go out and give it a go the tactics are simple as you've seen in this video but it's loads of fun even the small ones like this one pull the tear line off the reel and a great fun pristine condition and a pleasure to catch. Let's get this beautiful fish straight back. So finally can sit down, a drink of water, <laughs> been having sips all the way through. It has been a bit manic, but great fun. I really, really enjoyed today and was fighting those demons at dinner time thinking, or oh, can I be bothered driving down? But I'm sat here now, so glad that I did. You know, so many times we talk ourselves out of it, don't we? You know, we sit there and think, oh, I can't be bothered, or I'll go tomorrow. And when tomorrow comes, it's probably raining. But today I decided to. And I'm so glad that I did. And this does feel like quite weird it's more of a jagged like it could be foul hooked it's a weird fight and it is a barbel just seeing its door something I think barbel number three of the session and we are coming to the end of it now I'm not gonna give it too long into dark the third barbel and it's just been a beautiful evening by the bank you know, they give frost at the end of next week, so that'll probably push these guys on to feed even harder when they feel that bite of autumn coming. But it's been a really enjoyable day on the bank. Couldn't have asked for any more. It's been a good, enjoyable session. So I was just about to recast the outside rod and the left hand rod has just moved off. But as you can see how cold it's getting, you can see me breath. It's probably going to be the last fish of the session, I think. Might have one more cast. So the second chub of the day, over four pound, just over at four one. And boy, would I like to meet these on the stick float. It'd be great fun. Definitely have to come back in winter to see if these guys hang about. The last 20 minutes of the session and then we'll be calling it a night been great fun let's get this chub straight back so walking back to the car you can see the ground white with the dew and that temperature really did drop i hope you've enjoyed this week's vlog tight lines in your own fishing and i'll catch us all next week
welcome to this week's angling vlog. This week you join me fishing the stick float and we're in search of silvers and chub. So the first frosts of the season have arrived today and normally it can be really harsh on the fishing and this river is only a shallow river so it can really affect it. You can see it's a flat calm behind me, it's like a sheet of glass. We'll take a look at the setup and the side tray and a look at the swim. So the rod that I'm going with today is my 14 foot Corbin glide rod. It's going to give me that extra power if we come across any of those chub and it's got the finesse for those days as we've seen on the channel. So I'm teaming that up with an Abu Garcia 506 closed face reel. Not a reel that I use a lot really as you'll see on the channel but I've decided to treat myself to a new reel and I did decide to go with a closed face one just to see if I like them. I have tried them before and never really got on with them but I thought why not give it a go. So that's the reel we're going with. So the line is three pound dread and float fish by far the best line for stick float fishing that there is out there nice and light pulls off the surface nice and well and gives you plenty of control over that float the float choice on the river dane is always easy you don't have to go too mad six number fours eight number fours ten number fours max and i've gone with a dome top today because there does look to be a bit of deviation in the flow so i'll need that dome top to pull them weight through the swim and not pull the float under i've got a bulk of Dinsmore egg shots in a bulk to get that bait down in the water today there's a bit of extra flow on so I want that bait in them lower layers I've got two number eight droppers a one pound seven ounce hook link down to a tiny size 18 Kamazan animal hook Kamazan animal is by far the best small hook that you can use if you're going to be encountering swims where you might come across dace and chub it's got that power and it's not going to bend out if you do connect with one of them chub so that's the setup, let's take a look at the side tray and the swim. So as always with stick float fishing, the side tray is nice and simple. We've got around about two pints of red maggot and I've got probably two pints of white left over from another session if we need them. And I've got around about two pints of Cheshire particle garlic hemp. It's something that's new to the range for winter, so it'd be great to test it out. And like I said on the last vlog, I can see it being the bait that I go with for barbel next year it really does stink and hopefully we'll do well for the silvers in the winter but the barbel next year so that's the swim for today and it's a beautiful calm still november morning the mornings that you love to fish the stick float not a breath of wind and a flat calm more than all on the vlog people are asking me to describe why i've chosen the swim that i've chosen in that vlog so I'll just go over now why I've picked this swim today and what this swim hopefully will give me as I say I've not been down it yet is a long trot now we have got these overhanging the inside but I'm pretty sure you know we can hold the rod out and we can at least get down to there what it also has is options as you can see there you've got the flow underneath your feet if you really want to go under your feet you've got the option to go down the middle and you have also got a bit of pace on the far side obviously it's not always ideal and there are a few things that are worrying me about the swim one is the lack of fish topping which could be a time of year thing but the other is the boils that are appearing here that just suggest there might be a snag right where we're going to put our hemp that is a worry but we'll see how we do and i'm just going to introduce a bit of hemp into the swim not too much because obviously we don't know what's beneath the water but in an ideal world I want to be getting my bites just downstream of that hemp maggots upstream just in line with the willow so they're on the bottom and I think by the time the maggots are getting down they'll probably be on the bottom round about where my hemp is as well As you can see there, trickling bottom and we've hit a snag right down the swim so not the greatest start and that is another snag <laughs> so we've got a snag right down the river and we've got one right at the top which is disastrous really so it makes it very difficult when you've got two snags in the swim one you can generally work around 
um, to begins to make life a bit difficult so it's taken probably half an hour and this is by no means a game changer but we've got a bite there are snags all the way in front of me and below but it's about half an hour of fishing just sticking with it learning where to hold back in the swim we've got a bite which if we can catch one like i've said before we can catch more and that is a confidence boosting bite because it was getting to the stage where you begin to think about you know moving and even better it's a daze so there we go the first fish of the day it is ice cold and when i say ice cold i mean that it really is cold that fish but hasn't been easy far from easy we've got snags here here and that one's just come holding back round about there which there is a snag there as well so far from an easy start but a fish a great confidence boost so the next trot down after that day so i've just had another day so there was two lads just talking to me who were fishing the river for the first time and I said it had been a hard start and then you you hook a fish but and there we go there's an another one and the little change that i've made is i've come this side of halfway and the most important thing now is that i can get from here to where i would expect to get bites in in one trot i'm not hitting snags yet and that's the third fish on the bounce and isn't that a lesson in perseverance you can see there i think it's a cormorant mark or a hemorrhage mark on its back again ice cold but that's the third day and it's taken what half an hour to an hour to get the first one and like i just said i was speaking to some lads and that's the third day in three casts we go another fish and just coming again on that that inside line and it's a beautiful day today for fishing the stick float there's not a breath of wind and you can just hold that float back on another day so the next fish has just come right down the swim and i mean right down just out the blue which hopefully is the start of a few more fish moving up but again looks like another day and those that have followed the channel for a while will know the days by far my favorite fish I've had many a good days fishing for days and one thing i am liking is the quality of the fish swim had gone really quiet and all them days disappeared and i've just upped into a a much better fish and it is a weird experience i normally play fish on the clutch but i've put the back wind on this reel just because i don't know exactly how the clutch works but it is noticeable how the swim did go really quiet now there are a lot of snags in the swim it does feel a nice fish i've got no idea what it is it's just holding it's got plenty of power do you know what if i was going to guess i'd say it was a pike because it's just got that, that that jaggedness as if you've hooked you've hooked a um a dace and a pike's taking it I don't know, it's <laughs> just jump clear out the river downstream. It's a powerful fish. At this stage you just wanna see what it is really. Got no idea. And so we are on that tiny size 18 hook <laughs> and it does feel a very big fish. It's just come upstream now. I just 
in these scenarios I really just want to see what it is I think it could be a trout actually can't move it off the bottom up he comes again looks to have some lovely spots on it and it's in the net what a battle I've got no idea how heavy that is but it's easily the biggest trout I've ever caught we'll give it a good rest I'll have a good rest and we'll take a look at it there we go what a battle I've got no idea whether it's a brown trout a sea trout or what it is I think it's a brown trout leave in the comments section below what you think it is but what a battle on that size 18 hook one pound seven ounce line and three pound main line what a battle had a few days today and it went quiet and this is probably why but a good rest before i've blogged it um we'll give him a good rest before he goes back but what a battle thank you very much on a cold frosty morning give me a great battle let's get it straight back so the fine lines of fishing eh? a tiny size 18 hook and yeah what a battle it's great fun i hope it's all come out on the gopro it's been about 10 15 minutes dealing with that fish you know give it a good rest before it went back and what a beautiful fish and for me now that's <laughs> that's me you know my heart was pumping and that's made my session that it's probably going to have spooked the swim a bit you know it was all all literally all over the place wasn't it but yeah we got him in in the end and I guess shows what you can get in on light line if you just take your time but buzzing absolutely buzzing so not much else materialized in that swim after that big trout and that can be the case when you do hook trout they can be quite volatile in the swim and can ruin the fishing but i wouldn't change that fish for the world what a battle so the thinking here is that this could be an area where the fish have sheltered in the past couple of days when it's been raging through they will come into slacks like this created by that tree to shelter i'm just hoping that there's one or two about i know from experience there's very few snags in this swim and i'm just going to start putting some hemp about here and literally just going off the edge of that tree and just seeing what's here so this morning i mentioned about those first frosts that we've had today and for me they're a signal that the good times are, are coming you can have some fantastic days fishing in winter but your margins of error are fine by that i mean you know the days are short and the fish are more condensed on this whole river there'll be pockets of fish and they're only going to get tighter and tighter as we move into winter but when you find them you can have some great days fishing and the fish will be quite confident feeding they'll come to the bait and you can get a bite of chuck but I can't stress enough in any type of fishing it's never just turn up and a bite a chuck you've got to put the groundwork in beforehand you know learn your river and learn where they are and it changes every year this swim last year could have been full of chub this year the fish might not be in it and you've just got to find them and spend time on your rivers and that is the, the key to everything with river fishing, like canals and everything else, you get out what you put in. And today is one piece of that bigger jigsaw, later on in the year, when we come back and we do have a good day's fishing. It's days like today, where we've tried a couple of swims to try and find them, that will set us up for them future sessions. So it's taken probably 15 minutes of trotting a swim and the float is buried and there's no head shaking with this one almost certainly going to be a chub I would think just hope we can get him in again just using that back wind because I'm going to have to have a play with the drag on it but a lovely bend in the rod and it just shows sometimes a, a change of swim can, can really pay off. It's 
the leaves behind me on the ground and the first frost this morning I must admit this was the prize that I was hoping for proper made up with that I'm gonna trickle some more maggots in and hopefully let's be positive and see if there's another one about but proper made up with that don't be in too much of a rush to cast back in and just keep them on that same line and just take your time the last thing you want to do is lose one this isn't a very big one but still you want to make sure you get every single one of them in and even though that's a much smaller chub they're all in there together and you really don't want to be losing one it can really spook the show for an hour at times so with only a short amount of time of the day left you've got to make sure you kind of get everyone in but one thing today I've shown is the quality of the fish has been there. Last time on here, these were the quality fish that we were getting on the day. And now, they're the smallest. So them bites have come on the outside of the flow. Um, just into the flow, not in the crease in the main glide. So, just putting a bit of hemp in just to keep the fish there. Them chub of any size can eat quite a bit of food. And you'll notice the rod's still in the edge from that last chub. And this is how I do it. I'm just going to put a bit of bait in, take me time, might check my phone just to see what the score is on the football and stuff like that. The main thing is you're not in too much of a rush to get straight back in. The longer you leave it, the more confident them fish will get. And over the course of the day, you will catch more of them. So I've been having an absolute nightmare with that new reel. The little clip on it that recesses into the spool just keeps catching all the time and it has been doing it intermittently throughout the day but yeah it just become a real nightmare so I've moved over to a fixed spool reel and that is a lovely day so we've had some lovely fish today that chub and that trout but for me that's the nicest a lovely autumn plump days great stuff so what I've seen that is this truly is one of my favourite places to be on the bank. It's always changing. In summer you get the reeds over there, but you can see everything is just dying back. But if you just look at them reflections and the colours, you can just see that the colours of autumn are well in. And it won't be long before them trees are just spindles, all the leaves gone and just the branches. What a beautiful bite that was, right at the back of the swim where you'd expect Mr Chubb to be. Just hanging out the back there, picking up all the bait that's going through that them days are missing. And a lovely bend in the rod. And hopefully We've got Mr. Chubb on the end. What a lovely bite that was, right at the end of the swim. Knew straight away it was Mr. Chubb. It's where he always is, isn't it? At the very back, just mopping up them maggots and not getting caught. But just trotting down the back of the swim, managed to pick him up. Not going to take too long blogging him because we are at that time of day now where we've got to make the most of the last hour or two. So let's get him straight back and see if we can pick up another. So it had gone very quiet for the last probably 20 minutes. And you just knew Mr. Chubb was about, you could just tell them days had just disappeared. And it's no surprise that it took a while for the float to bevy and this chub just heading upstream. It says a chub after today. Quite possibly missed a trout. <laughs> I was normally confident on here if anything bigger was a a chub. But it's got them lazy boils of the chub in the edge. And you just knew they were about. You can just tell 
then days disappear. And obviously at this time of day, time is of the essence. So we won't take too long in blogging him. A lovely autumn chub. Let's get it straight back and see if we can pick up one in them last few moments of the session. Let me just hook another one right at the very end of the swim. And like I said a bit earlier, you do get to chub o'clock at this time of year. Them last embers of the day, they just come on the feed and the sad part is the days are so short. But that's come probably two casts after the last one, so you can see how different the session can be and how responsive they can be at different times of day. So when you get to the embers of the session, I always feel like you're picking up the ones that have got away with it in the hours gone by. It's only been a short afternoon in this swim, but what an adventure it's been. We're moving into the last hour now, so I'm not going to take too long blogging this fish, but we'll get it straight back and see if we can pick up one more. And one thing you never have to worry about with chub is how much you feed. You see there, that's got a mouthful of maggots. Not the biggest chub in the world. But you can just see just how much one of them can eat. So never worry about putting bait in when you know there's chub about. That's what you've got to do. You've got to prey on that greed to keep them there and to catch them. So right on last knock in, just up into the last fish of the day, right down the swim. And we'll call this one the last one, we'll get him in, take a look at him, and then have a look at that final net. You've got to put that groundwork in throughout the session to create this scenario at the end. And you, like I said, you're reaping the rewards of all that hard work. It's a beautiful end to the session. I'm going to have a couple more casts, see if we can pick up one more. We always want one more, don't we? But we'll get this beautiful fish back. So that chub did mark the end of the session, and what a session it was. That trout was a really big surprise and what a fight. Certainly was surprised to get it in and even more surprised by its beautiful colours. That chub did mark the end of that session and it just shows how two swims can be so different and at this time of year those chub are not going to move from where they want to be. You can put as much bait in as you want if you're 100 yards away. It's 100 yards too far away. I thoroughly enjoyed this session and it has marked the change I think in the river we're into that time now where those chub and better quality days are hopefully going to make up the nets not as many fish but better quality I hope you've enjoyed this week's blog tight lines in your own fishing and I'll catch us all next week join me at first light on the river if we're looking at the rods I've got a float rod just down the margin hoping to pick up any pike that are patrolling along this cover and you've got to make the most of it because after the first frosts this will all go so while it's here you make the most of it so pike is today's target we've got one rod out on a running ledger and on that we've got a skimmer and on the other rod We've got an eel, both set to go and hopefully it won't be too long before that dropper hits the floor. For this area that we're fishing today, I've not fished for around about two or three years and back then you could set your watch by the pike at quarter to nine in the morning you would always get a run. Between quarter to nine and half, and half nine you would definitely get a chance of a pike. So it'll be interesting today to see if that is still the case and you know if the place has changed. We have had a lot of rain recently. There is a bit of tow on the river. Now it doesn't look like much for most rivers, but on this one it's a fair bit of tow. And there is a lot of colour.
So I'll just have the first run of the day and it did have a little play with it to begin with um, let it go but doesn't surprise me that it's only a small one but it's a start the one thing that we'll take from that is if that one can find it then anything else can at the start of this vlog we talked about bite times and how three years ago bite time was about quarter to nine till half past nine and although some things about this venue have changed the scenery the look of it some things never changed did he 20 to 9 the first run of the day and a nice little pike on the bank let's get this little guy straight back like i always say with the pike you've got to get them a good rest before they go back and before you try and unhook them and blog them and we'll let this little guy go the pike fishing for me normally goes hand in hand with an early morning 6am trip to McDonald's but it's time to try and get rid of some of those Covid pounds so it's a nice healthy breakfast this morning one pike on the bank hopefully they'll give me a bit of time to have this brekkie and hopefully there's another pike out there looking at one of the baits Really quickly while I've got the rod in I'll go over the setup that I'm using today I've got my 12 foot 3.25 pound test curve dead bait snapper rod from Corvum a Zelos reel and on there I've got 60 pound braid a lot of people ask why such heavy line and the reason isn't so much to get the pike in it's to make sure that you can bend them hooks out should you get stuck on a snag you don't want to be leaving any of this end tackle on the bottom of your lakes or your rivers or your canals. Moving down to the business end and it is the simplest of rigs I've got a 3 ounce gripper lead there from Dinsmore's the same low resistance run ring that I use for my barbell fishing two beads to aid separation on the cast just means that you're not going to get tangled as you're casting in that's down to a swivel and then I've got an 18 inch homemade wire trace two trebles and on this one we've got a heaven a few people in the comments have asked about the mechanics of dead baiting for pike using a ledger now the ledger does stay on the bottom like that and when it's fishing the line will be tight to it when you get a run the line will move freely through the ledger but your actual lead weight doesn't move on the bottom that's the whole point of the low resistance run ring that the pike can move away with the bait your bite recognition will come at the other end where we'll take a look now at the alarms and the tackle that we use to register a bite so with the big cast in let's have a look at the business end that's on the bank so you've got your reel with an open bail arm obviously if you had the bail arm open down to the lead there'd be no way of getting the tightness to the lead to give you the sensitivity that you need when you get a bite what i use is one of these fox back arms they're about 15 pounds to buy and this one i've had for a number of years now and it does the job the job that it does is basically keeps this line tight so when you get a run when the pike pulls that bait through the run ring at the other end that we've seen you get a pull on the line like that and that's when the line will pull out the clip and the pike will begin to move off now this line's pulling because obviously the river's pulling the line and as the pike moves off you'll get the line pulling through the reel and that's where you get your indication on your bite alarm and that's how it works as you can see there the line pulls off as you get a run and then you pick your rod up and strike down into the fish to tighten it back up with your bay alarm on you tighten up to a certain point where you can feel the line against the clip your clips open you put your line in the clip like that and then it's just a case of opening your bay alarm
there we go the second pike of the day seven pound exactly but some fish are just memorable for the colors and this has got some stunning colors on it the mottling been perfect and it's one of the reasons why i come the river you know very fortunate that the canal of fish also produces some stunning colored fish but river fish i've just got that extra bit of markings and vibrancy second pike of the day coming really quickly after a recast and again just giving it that time to rest you can see there the lovely colors amongst its natural hunting surroundings i imagine but just give them that time to recuperate in the net before you let them go so let's take a look at some of the baits that i brought with me today for the river session they do differ from the ones that i do take the canal so let's take a look the main thing that changes is the size of the bait early on in the season in october i'm about working out what's working some years it's a whole bait other years it's just a tail section so i'll start off with half a bait then try a full bait and it's just about working out what the fish want at this time of year so always have the heavens with me smelt isn't really a bait that i would go to on the river straight away on the canal yes but on the river no but it's a fantastic change bait and a great bait if i want to do some wobbling and the fish are striking actively in the area then the other thing that i think about is smell so if the river's up and colored i want a bit of smell in the water i've got baits like mackerel and then these packs like i've said before are fantastic they give you little change baits you know like a trout mackerel sardines you know a good pack to have with you you know if it's hard and you want to try a couple of things but we've had two pikes today so we'll leave it be and the bait that's done the damage today which i have to say thank you to louise who have bumped into on the bank is eel um i've managed two and they've all come on eel so it just shows you can have all the baits prepared last night but you need that slice of luck so into the afternoon now and conditions are pretty good considering we had that bright spell this morning really runs wise you can count on one hand how many runs i've had in the afternoon but you never really lose hope when conditions are like this you know gray overcast it does feel right for another bite the water is just beginning to clear a little bit you know the clarity and hopefully we can just pick up that one more run that would round the session off nicely a lot of head shaking which is never a great feeling With all the mouth splashing that she did, head shaking. I'm amazed Pike hasn't managed to spit the hooks. But that one there is actually completely loose. <laughs> it just shows the fine margins of piking. Sometimes they're well hooked and they come off. And other times they're on by one hook. Although, there we go. What we'll do, we'll get her in the edge, give her a rest, because it was a hard fight, and then we'll weigh her, and then we'll take a look. And there we go, the first double of the season, just under £11, and what lovely colours, and just shows reward for perseverance. All bites today have come on that eel section that Louise gladly give to me at the start of the session. Thank you very much if you're watching. Let's get this beautiful pike straight back. I don't think this one will take too much resting. Proper battle of on the bank and in the water. Fighting already to get out. Let's let her go. And there she goes. Thank you very much, girl. 
the first double of the season. There's about half an hour of the session left now and the temperature really is beginning to drop. You can feel it in the air. Change is most certainly on the way and those winter frosts won't be too far away. This session today has hopefully shown that as much as we think we know a venue, we had that run at half past eight, didn't we? We don't really know anything as anglers, do we? You know, four o'clock in the afternoon, sat there not expecting a bite, and the rod screams off with a lovely double figure pike. To the people out there who are enjoying the pike fishing and out doing your own fishing, what baits have you found have worked in your fishing early on? Eel today has been the bait that has, you know, caught most of the fish. So that is a bait that I'm going to have a bit more confidence in, in this venue. But pop a comment below as to what you're finding being a good bait this year. And barring anything happening in the next half an hour, I'd like to wish you all tight lines. I hope you pike lads are enjoying the videos that are on the channel and enjoying the adventure. And I'll catch us all next week. Tight lines.